Good afternoon. This is Dale Stonick, Director of uh, Safety here at Ace Door. I'd like to welcome everyone who's on our call today. Joining me today is Jason O'Brien. Jason, how are you? Hi, Dale. Hello, drivers. How's everybody out there? All right. Thank you, Jason. We're going ahead and get started with our call. I want to go over our um, metrics right now and let everyone know how we're doing as a company. Sue, I will start with our CSA scores. So on the ACE BME side, our scores for October are the following. Unsafe driving has moved up to uh, 70%. That was a 6% increase. We are now over the threshold for that. Hours of service stayed the same at 72%. Uh, driver fitness stayed the same also at seven. Controlled substance at three. And vehicle maintenance um, was also at the same at 81%. So obviously there's concern with unsafe driving. We now have a third basic that is over. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that here later in the meeting. On the uh, WIN government secure side, our scores are the following. Uh, unsafe is at uh, 1%. Uh, thank you everyone for keeping that score looking good. Hours of service has increased four percentage points, is now at 24%. Uh, vehicle maintenance has moved three percentage points up to 36, and everything else um, did not move, crashed still at 1%, and controlled substance at zero, and driver fitness, we do not have any violations. So with that, we're gonna move on to our scores, or excuse me, the uh, claims, both liability and cargo. Still looking very good here in that category. Um, this is through the end of October. Uh, we are at only 29% of goals, so that's great. Uh, we have less than $200,000 worth of claims. I just want to thank everyone for doing a great job on that. It makes us uh, look really good uh, when we're in claims meetings. Uh, you know, they're not putting a lot of attention on us because we're doing so well. I just want to thank everyone for doing that. We'd like to remind everybody we are starting to move into the winter months. So let's make sure we're prepared about that and we're doing the necessary things so we can avoid an accident. Uh, I do realize for all the good work we've done this year, it only take one accident, a uh, major accident, to wipe out everything that's happened. So um, with that, I would like to go over our clean inspections for this month. A uh, little light on the clean inspections. It also looks like we didn't have as many inspections as a whole, so I don't know if the uh, DOT officers are, took the month off or not. But as far as clean inspections, we have Edwin Diaz III, Ivory Chandler, Bill Moore, Sean Bolton, Bob Runlett, and Duff Nelson. So I'd like to thank you six drivers for getting those clean inspections and helping us make look good. Uh, Jason, what do you have going on today that you'd like to talk about? Oh, let me mention before we do, if you have any questions or safety tips, star three. That's right. Star three for any questions or safety tips. Uh, the good ones, of course, for as far as safety tips maybe in, in this call in particular, be if you have any good winter driving safety trip tips. Sorry about that. Um, but anything, you know, with winter, it's kind of already here, and uh, we've already experienced some drivers having some issues with some some weather. So if you have any good safety tips on that, it would be appreciated. Maybe share your knowledge. Um, some of the stuff that I did want to talk about today would be DOT inspections, um, e-logs, and DVIRs, and how that uh, needs to work uh, for the FMCSA for us. So everybody with an e-log has the ability to do DVIRs, um, and you can do them every day and just say that there's no defects, um, and that puts it into the record, and that's, I feel like, a good thing to do. It's not mandatory. Um, if you do have a defect, you should definitely put it in there. Uh, so if you have to change a light bulb or, or, or whatever it might be, you want to put that in there uh, any time that you have to work on it. Now, if you get a DOT inspection and it's not a, a clean inspection, so there's uh, some type of violation on there and it's something that needs to be repaired, then in that situation, it's imperative uh, that you that you do a DVIR that day for that log. With the Ram McNally system, uh, you only have that day to do it. Once once midnight comes and goes, then there's no opportunity to do uh, that DVIR for that day anymore, and it, that's the only time that you can do it. If you have a, a keep trucking e-log, uh, the advantage to those is that it does give you the ability, availability to go back and do it the next day, um, but it does it should be done the same day, uh, so you should always take care of it then. If you do have any questions on how to do a DVIR, 
whether it's on the Rand McNally system uh, or in Keep Trucking, please just give me a call and I'll go over that with you uh, so you can make sure that you get that done. That's pretty much uh, all I had to say on that topic. I did also want to talk about personal conveyance again and just remind drivers to use that wisely. It still continues to be our number one violation. And one reason for that is we don't usually just get one violation for it if, if the driver is using it inappropriately. They may have used it inappropriately um, or maybe just misused it uh, rather than use it inappropriately on purpose. But if instead of just getting one violation for that, you might see like three or four on the same inspection. So those points add up really fast. Uh, so please, just with personal conveyance, please be mindful and use it appropriately. Uh, and if you don't have to use it, uh, try not to use it, of course, and just use your regular drive time. You can't get a violation uh, for doing that unless you're over your hours of service. Uh, so you're kind of leaving that door closed for them as far as getting a bad, vi or bad inspection uh, with personal conveyance. Some of the other stuff I did also want to talk about, we still are, of course, talking about dash cams. If you have any good dash cam uh, stories or maybe exonerated a driver or something that you wish you might have had a dash cam for, um, star three. We do have the Falcon Eye cameras, um, which is like a local memory uh, that you can get right now. Those are 129 through the manufacturer. Uh, we've got a special deal with them. And then uh, if you have the Keep Trucking e-log, you can get a camera for free right now through the end of the year. So if you'd like to have one of those, uh, please just call in here, let me know, and I'll get you on the list. For those, if you have the Ram McNally e-logs but would like to get the Keep Trucking uh, free camp, dash cam part of things, we can do that. We'll get you switched over to Keep Trucking uh, for your e-logs and then be able to get you on that list for that camera as well. So kind of moving on from there, um, and just kind of another th thing that I wanted to have kind of like on our Star 3 log here is, is whether speeding is worth it to drivers. I know you guys probably saw our, our message today where we had a, a driver get uh, you know, pulled over for speeding, 6 to 10 over. He was on the side of the road for 42 minutes. And, you know, just whether that's really worth it to try to speed that 6 to 10 miles per hour over when it's going to cost you, you know, 45 minutes on the side of the road. Um, or maybe just any comments that drivers got to have on that speeding part of things. Well, in, in essence, too, you know, besides being stopped and, um, waiting along the side of the road is the opposite of the thing. The other thing, it does open up the opportunity for the officer to make a decision whether or not they want to do a vehicle and driver inspection at that point. So, you know, that's the other risk you really got away is how good is your stuff? Is my equipment going to pass inspection? Is my logs, you know, up to par? Am I going to get more points? So. Well, that's true, yeah. A lot of the maintenance violations we get, just as you're mentioning, come from being pulled over for speeding in the first place. Yeah. Yep. So additional risk that I don't think everyone uh, necessarily thinks about when they're doing those unsafe acts. So, yeah. which is definitely something we don't you know, need to invite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course. Um, did you have anything else you want to share today, or? Oh well, that was it for now. All right. right. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. We'll give it back to you there. Um, I did want to mention, uh, as uh, said earlier here at the beginning of this call, that a winner has made its way here. Um, you may not be seeing it every day, but depending on where you drive, uh, we've had a couple of snow winter events. So I just wanted to bring up a couple things to consider that you have in your truck. So as we move into the winter months, uh, you want to make sure you have some tire chains, shovel, windshield de-icer, spare windshield wiper blades, uh, having boots with traction on them, uh, stocking hat and gloves, winter coat, blankets, some extra water, snacks, first aid kit, and a flashlight with spare batteries. In case you are stranded, those items will come in handy. The other items that um, you need to start thinking about is making sure that uh, you're doing trip planning, and when you're trip planning, look to see what type of weather you're going into so you're prepared. Uh, increase your following distance, especially when there is uh, brain ice, snow on the roadway. You're gonna need additional time to come to a stop. Uh, eliminate the distractions. Uh, when you're driving in severe winter weather, make sure you stay hydrated. If you dehydrate, it can affect your uh, mental capacities there. And then uh, watch your cabin heat. You don't want to get it too warm. It could help prevent uh, fatigue if it's all nice and warm and a little sleepy. It's not a good place to be when you're driving in winter weather or any time for that fact. So I um, just want to throw those out there. I do want to mention Star 3 
if you have any questions or safety tips, uh, we will take questions here at the end of the call. The other thing that I did want to mention is um, I don't know if, uh, if everyone's kind of been watching or reading the um, the industrial or excuse me the industry's um, upcoming topics, but one of them that's starting to make its way out there is that we are moving away from the classic CSA model that we talk about every month, and it's starting to move over to a new one. And uh, the FMCSA is looking probably by sometime next year, uh, September is what I saw, to move over to the individual response theory model. Um, I was just in a conference call on that yesterday with our uh, provider who gives us the information and just started to talk about that. So I just wanted to bring that to people's minds and just start letting you think about how things are going to change. So we're moving away from having individual uh, basics with scores in them to one score. It's going to be your safety culture score. So um, some of the highlights from that is that um, you're no longer going to have individual uh, points per violation. It's going to be set up with the 66 violation groups. So they group uh, similar items together like vehicle maintenance type of stuff. So lights, turn signals or markers is a group. Unsafe driving, you'll have like speeding designations, um, you know, lane movement type of stuff. So we're definitely moving away from that to this new model, and I just wanted to bring that to people's attention so you start thinking about it and, you know, um, see how it's going to affect us. So definitely that's something on the horizon that we need to start thinking about. So we're going to go ahead and open this up to um, questions. So star three. If you have a question or safety tip, go ahead and we will uh, bring you into the queue. And while we're waiting for that, uh, I did want to draw for uh, this month for the six individuals who had a clean inspection, additional $100 gift card to them. I'm going to let Jason do the honors here. So if you want to. All right. Go ahead and draw there. Really good odds this month, one out of six chances. Yeah. Of getting a car here. I'm going to go with this one here, which is from where I'm sitting in the number four position. And that is going to be Bob Runlet. Bob Runlet. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Bob. Get to uh, your gift card there, sir. So, All right. Um, we do have an individual coming on. We have a couple more. So, Patrick, as soon as you can let me know, Violet is live. All right. Violet, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Haven't seen you in a week or two. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I was listening about you know the winter driving preparedness, and there's one thing that you guys didn't mention, is that you know the the fuel we get these days does have a percentage of biodiesel in it, and yeah. you know it'll say five to twenty percent on the pump, but we never know how much biodiesel we're getting. Now, I do recommend carrying um, uh, a gelling. A 911 is a um, something that will help you get ungelled, but hopefully that drivers would put. I, I run House Anti Gel, and yeah, it does say double it up. And uh, I do know it's expensive to buy it at the truck stops, but um, I do, you know, and that's one thing I feel that we need in the winter time to stop from gelling because I don't know to get a truck ungelled can be very expensive. Yeah. But um, I do get it off Amazon for ten dollars a bottle. Okay. Just saying. That's that's a good good tip for sure. So, are you still in Texas, or have you uh, delivered back there already? No, I'm still waiting here in Clinton to get loaded. All right, and then you're heading to Texas. Yep. All right. Well, well, hopefully it's have... warmer down there. It's cold up here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hope, hope you have safe travels, Violet. All right. All right. Thank you. That's all I wanted to bring up is just some anti-gel. All right. Well, thank you. So. That, uh, thank you, Violet. So that does bring to uh, mind... I did see Violet here a couple of weeks ago at a safety meeting that I was doing down in Texas. If you have not completed your safety meetings for this quarter, please do so. You can either go online to driversig.com or if you're near a terminal, uh, call up and we will have a safety meeting done for the, you when you get there. Um, last I checked, I think we only had about 38% of our drivers complete a safety meeting so far this quarter. Typically, we're a lot higher than that. So. Um, I know with the holidays coming up, you're probably going to get distracted. So if you have time, I would suggest the next week or two would be the ideal time to get it done. 
Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and talk to our next caller here, uh, Ken. Yeah. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well. What's on your mind? I just got a question. Uh, my e-logs updated on uh, Rand McNally. Uh, is there a way of doing it without having to go over and start my truck up and catch up in the logs all the time? You know, when I'm off. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is Jason. But, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you're going to be off for a little while, I actually would I'd recommend that you would do this instead of going uh, to the truck. Um, it might make it a little bit easier for you. But what you can do uh, with Rand McNally is you would just go to your uh like your desktop, your you know whatever you use your, for your computer. Um, yep. if you're on a tablet, you can use Chrome, like on an iPad uh, or or on an Android tablet, I believe. But all you have to do is go to connect.ramcnally.com, and once you're there, you'll log in with your 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 driver ID, uh, your password, and your username, and then you'll need our company code. Um, that's B G. M E dash P R O D. Uh, but once you log in there, um, you can actually schedule that off duty time. So if you know you're going to be off for two weeks, we'll say, you can go ahead and say that you're going to be off duty from this day until that day. And then it records them all as off duty logs. They're all certified. And then when you come back, it's all ready to go. All you got to do is, is start, start uh, going on duty and driving. You don't have to worry about certifying all those days in the past. Okay. That's what I was wondering then. Uh, yeah. yeah. I use Windows 10 at home on my computer, so I, I can go and uh, uh, do that. I don't have a pen on me right now, but I'll have to get the passcode. I'll call, it, call you later and get that again from you. Yeah, absolutely. Call me when you got a pen so you can write it down, and, and uh, I'll let you know, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, thanks, you, Ken. Thanks, Ken. All right, so star three, the queue is open if anyone has a question or a comment they would like to make. That would be great. Uh, we are at the end of the month. I know this is usually the time that Jason likes to mention to turn in. Well, yeah, it's, it is at that time of the month. We've only got two days left, of course, if your inspection is due in November. Um, so please get that in, uh, especially if you've already had it done. Send it in uh, today if you could because I can get them processed a little bit faster. A lot of times people have them done early but send them on the 30th for some reason. Um, so please send them in as soon as they're completed. That will help me get them into the system a little bit more efficiently. Um, if you do have any questions on approved locations or anything like that, just give me a call and I'll help everybody with that as well. Uh, yeah, that is good advice. I know uh, when I came in Monday morning, there was a lot of inspections sitting on the printer slash fax machine. So but Yeah, and I understand that because the weekend yeah. is in there, so that makes sense to me. But um, the other thing, of course, is make sure you get your 90-day maintenance forms filled out. Always turn those in with your inspection since they're due at the same time. just makes it easier to keep track of for us. Um, so there is that. All right. With inspections. Jason, looks like we have another caller. Of, looks like Mar Marlon, how are you? I'm oh, pretty good. How is everybody? I hope everybody's doing well. We're doing well. Uh, yeah. Do you have a Great. safety tip or a question? Question uh, about inspections. Um, I don't know if this sounds silly or not, but when we get pulled for level one inspections, does that count as an inspection? Yeah, so if you have a DOT roadside inspection, any inspection you get will count. So if you're kind of asking about, like, clean inspections, we, we pay that uh, bonus regardless of inspection type. Well, I'm, I'm talking about regards to – I know we have our – Okay, so I think this is a little bit foggy for me. We have a 90-day everyday maintenance inspection that we have to do. Right. So if and you're talking about your 90-day inspection, which would really be like an annual inspection, um, so it would be like going to like a TA. Is that what you're talking about rather than a DOT inspection? Yeah, so basically, yeah, so in other words, every 90 days we basically get an annual inspection. That's correct, yeah. We're over in the maintenance okay. category, and that's why we're happy to pay for inspections uh, for our 33 drivers to get those done. Um, okay. To try to bring that number down on that DOT. Okay, okay. And, and that's what I'm saying because, uh, all right, so those are separate from any roadside inspections that we do. We still need to have our 90-day maintenance inspection. Right, right, that's correct. And at that okay, time, also turn in your, your vehicle maintenance report. So what – what work you did on your truck in the last 90 days, you know, oil change, new tires, lights, 
whatever you did. Yeah, and that's a great that you brought that up as well because of what we do with inspections is at the beginning of the month, you get an email that has the approved inspection list, it has a 90-day maintenance form, and it has a blank inspection form in it as well as attachments on the email. Now, there are a lot of drivers that we don't have email addresses for, so I would encourage if you have an email address um, that you're using that we just don't have on file here, please give us a call so we can get that on file. So when it comes to things like that, you're able to get those, those documents, and if you need them, print them up uh, to make it a little bit easier on you as well, and that way you can also see where you can get your inspections done. Let me see. Thank you. Thank oh, you. No problem, Martin. Thanks for the call. It was great. Yeah, good, good information there. Good turn. All right. So uh, looks like we got James next in the queue. James, how are you? Uh, that, uh, is that me you're James? talking to? Hey. Uh, okay. Hello, James. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you get me all confused. I'm not James. I'm JW. <laughs> all right. My bad. Our caller right now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and and y'all can tell Violet it is warmer in Texas. Oh, good. She'll be happy. <laughs> well, I'm not, though, because I'm headed for North Dakota. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you have to go where it's not that warm. <laughs> uh, one thing on the winter driving. Yep. Some some drivers need to consider with the elements and the weather and everything, they might want to put together an emergency package, like a set of jumper cables, starting fluid, things like that, that you might need in an emergency, or you might find somebody on the side of the road oh, yeah. that you could save, save their life by jumping, starting their vehicle for them or something. Yeah, good point. I mean, that's that's not a cost. That's an investment. True. So. But I've seen a lot. I've seen. I've even seen a lot of our drivers that don't even carry tools in the truck. Yeah, that's not good. And well, I know some of our drivers that couldn't change a light bulb with instructions. But you know, you do need some minor things with you for emergencies. Well, right, and that's a very good point. And uh, I always think that would be, you know preparedness is a lot of of driving and, and having things like that available uh, would be great. And I highly would recommend that uh, everybody would do something like that. Uh, and one other question I wanted to ask. On the 90-day inspection form, yeah. uh, can could y'all prepare one of those in a PDF format, self-fillable format, where you could fill it out on your computer? You want an editable PDF? Or, I mean, would Excel be better for that, do you think? Or? No, actually, PDL, self-fillable PDL is the best thing to do because you can set it to where you can enter all your stuff in and save it on the computer okay. and directly email it out of the computer. Yeah, absolutely. And that way, we don't, that way we're not killing some more trees. Well, yeah, and I totally agree with that, and I prefer things to be digital. Um, but and I, that's something we can definitely do, and I'll get made up for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, if 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 y'all if y'all have trouble doing it, let me know. I'll do one and send you. All right. That sounds good. All right. As long as long as y'all approve us to use them. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, JW. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have an inbound caller. Hello. Hello. Well, that sounds like Chad. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Chad. Hey, um, I, I was just uh, tuning in. Uh, sorry I couldn't be over there uh, with you guys to, to join you uh, in person. But um, in regards to the to the question that Marlon had on the 90-day inspections, um, I, I know we have um, – we email those uh, inspection sites out to to the fleet – um, can you talk to, isn't that list on driver's IG as well of our inspection sites? On driver's IG, I'm not aware that it is on there, no. Okay. The list that I have, um, I, actually, Chad, it's only available on paper that I know of, and I've been typing it 
so I do have a digital version of that, so I can send out something that's. A yeah, little, I, I was just because uncertain. I think that might be why we, we you know, we kind of lag on some of those ninety days uh, or quarterlies, I guess is what we call them. Um, so, um, Marlon, great question. Uh, if you're still tuning in. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also take a quick minute uh, for everybody that is participating in this call. Uh, we appreciate your time uh, and, and your dedication because without you guys out there on the road, uh, there there is no us. So uh, thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, stay safe, and I uh, hope all of you have a, a happy holidays. Thank you, Chad. All right. Next, looks like we have uh, Jerry on the line. Jerry, how are you? Good. Uh, I had a couple of questions and comments for Jason. Um, Let him have it. We used to have, we used to have a uh, policy on the 90-day inspection that, or going back to Marlon's question, if you got a clean level one inspection on the month your 90-day was due, they would take that in exchange for your 90-day inspection. Yeah, from what I heard, we used to do that, but we haven't done that in a while. Um, last time I spoke with Paul, I heard that was kind of floating around, but I hadn't heard where that's a definitive yet. Okay, and then um, what JW was talking about, I don't know if he was thinking about the maintenance form, because um, it is available. Actually, Jason, you showed it to me. On The, the maintenance forms are available uh, where you can fill them in and save them on the uh, driver's IG under safety. Oh, well, yeah, and, and that is uh, true. That's true. They are there. I didn't uh, think about that for the maintenance forms. Uh, you can go to driversig.com. You click on the safety tab, and, and then it says maintenance forms for your tractor and your trailer are right there. That's that is true. Yeah. Thank you. So there you go. You don't have to look yeah, there. Yeah, and it will save all your information. I believe you can print those too from there. Yes, you can print them, um, and it does save the information. And I got I, that information goes directly to Bennett, so I don't see that here, but. It does get recorded. Okay, then my real word reason for calling in was the uh, keep truck and e-log. I don't, I have the Rand McNally, but I have some questions about the keep truck. And do I understand it correctly that it doesn't have its own data plane like the Rand McNally? It's got to use my data. Um, well, it does have its own data plan, but it is it's different in what it reports through that data. So the vehicle diagnostics part of parts of things that get reported, that'll all go through the cellular connection that's built into the keep trucking. But the logs themselves would use the data on the device that you're using. So whether it be a, a tablet or a phone, that would go through that phone or tablet's data connection to send in your logs. So would I need to keep it connected all day or could I send them in once a day? Once a day. Yeah, I mean once a day would be fine to get them in. Um, that would be fine. Because I've had a couple of drivers who've asked about that since you have to have a, a data, some sort of data hookup for your tablet. Um, the one thing is a lot of people have personal hotspots on their mobile phones now, so you can have a tablet, turn on your personal hotspot, and then just let the logs feed up through that, and you'll be fine. Right, yeah, I, I hotspot off my phone, but I don't want to give up on my, on my TV and movie-watching data for my e-log, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, nobody. Nobody wants that. <laughs> right. So. Okay. That's all my questions for today. But thanks for calling in, Jerry. Thank you. I mean, hey, no uh, problem. I, thanks, Jerry. I know we've kind of talked a little bit on the past between keep trucking and RAN, and obviously we will continue supporting RAN. But um, keep trucking, I feel, has a lot more options, you know, for individual use, and it just seems a more cutting edge product. Yeah, it is, it's more cutting edge, uh, a lot more reliable um, with the keep trucking. So, yeah. I mean, we, we I don't think you've sent out a replacement box ever ever for keep trucking and all the RAM boxes. I wouldn't be surprised if you've replaced every box at least once, maybe no. twice. <laughs> no, I haven't replaced every every box, but a vast majority of them I have, yes. So, just something to think about because I know how frustrated drivers get when the box goes down and, you know, we have to get them out of replacement box and, Oh yeah, well yeah, because you know, and it's more of an expense that way because you have to ship them overnight and yep. get people back on the road. They have to wait for the box to arrive. Sometimes it's yep. it's bad in a lot of different ways. True. So, all right. Well, with that being said, um, we do not have anyone else in the queue. So, um, go ahead and sign off here. We will have a one at uh, six thirty. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, those who couldn't make it 
for this particular one, we'll give another opportunity. So um, I just want to echo what Chad said and thank all the drivers for without the hard work and effort you guys do, there is uh, no need for us. So thank you so much. Jason? Yeah, and I'm, again, just like that, uh, definitely appreciate all the drivers out there. Without uh, you guys, of course, there is no us, just like Dale just said. Um, and I do just want to make sure you guys understand that when so a lot of times it might sound like some of the things I say, especially with logs, it's kind of like trying to, to correct you in some way, but I'm just trying to make sure we're doing the right things for the FM CSA. I'm here for you, um, and I work for you guys to do what we need to do to make things successful as a company. So that's uh, what I had to say there. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day.